couple things that are very important, how I write, Every, everyone writes differently, but I believe that every single person has within them uh, a book. And I've talked about this in the videos, some of you have seen the three videos, maybe you have not, if you have not, I'm just gonna, I'm going to say something people have, I'm just gonna repeat. I, I think that everyone's born with that sense inside themselves of uh, soul experiences from, from this lifetime or other lifetimes, many lifetimes. And I think we draw upon that with every uh, choice we make in life. I think we, whether it's conscious or unconscious, we draw on that soul experience of lifetime in order to choose the right way. Uh, if we go into our heart space and the heart, I always love to say the heart is technically the, the soul is technically behind the heart, going into your heart and feeling what is right for you. If you stay in your head, you'll rationalize it, left brain, analyze it, overanalyze it, over criticize yourself. And that's something you don't want to do. So um, I want to talk about my process, which is different probably than other people, but my process, which has helped me to um, pen 14 bestsellers and also um, I could be writing every single day if I wanted to, but I have to feel motivated and there's got to be a reason for it. So for me personally, there's got to be something I need to say, okay? Now, what sets you different? Some people say, I have nothing within me. Um, I, what can I write about? I'm not good enough. No one wants to hear from me. Not true. Any subject that you feel passionate about, that you feel that you can write about, you can share your own personal perspective, and that's very, very important because no one has heard your perspective, which is very, very different than anybody else's. And your voice might need to be heard. And I can say this based upon my experience in writing. My first book, Talking to Heaven, was a book that I had to do. I felt within me that had the, these words had to be out. The story has to be told about life after death, about possibility of communication, about mediumship. And I had to inform or educate people about that. So that was written back in 1997. At that time, there were very few books on life after death. And you, you know, you'd think um, nowadays you would say, oh, that's a great book. It was easy to get published. No, it wasn't. It was really difficult to get published. And I didn't stop because within me, there was this fire burning within me, this passion that I knew I had to bring forth these words, this information, this perspective from my perspective about life after death. And I went around to different publishers, probably about four or five publishers, top publishers like Simon & Schuster and HarperCollins, all, all different ones. And they all rejected it. They said, no, nobody wants to read a book about death. It's too morbid. Nobody would like that. And I said to them, no, you're wrong. And the reason you're wrong is because I believe every human has the experience of birth. We know a little bit about that. But every human wants to know about death. And we don't know enough about that. So this book will really bring light uh, to the reader, to people, to open their minds up about life after death, to really give them some knowledge and wisdom about that. And there was one girl at... Uh, Penguin Putnam named Danielle Perez, who this day I, I hail because she was an editor there and she saw the vision. She saw that vision. She said, you're right. Everybody wants to know about death. We all have that yearning. And that was how that book got published. Now the initial printing was 6,000 copies, which is very small. It's back in 1997. And my very first tour that I went to for a city was Cleveland, Ohio. And this happens in those days where there are book tours. Not a lot of book tours anymore. Things have changed so much in publishing, and of course, I, go, I talk about that extensively. But in those days, the author would go out of book tour, and the first place was Cleveland. I remember the first show was a radio show, and it was in a college radio station, right? And then I remember that two days before Marianne Williamson had done uh, a show in this radio station, so I was like, okay, can't be that bad. Great, Marianne is there. And I did the radio show. It was, it was done, done well. It was uh, accept, accepted very well. And then I went to the bookstore after that, and there were no copies of my book to be found. So the publisher actually sent me there with no books. So it was not interesting. So that's a publishing nightmare, but that does happen to many authors in the past. Nowadays, it's a little bit different, which we'll get into that in the course. But I remember that it, it really was up in the spirit world about how it's going to be put, put out there. And I believe that the spirit world will pull strings in all different directions, and you have to try every option you can to get that out there. Um, so that, that's something, but again, we go into the course and extensively how to get your work out there. Whether it's self-published uh, with a regular publisher, if you need an agent or not, things have changed so much. And my first book, Talking to Heaven, the way I write, um, well, what the, what the ways I like to write, the, the, really the first thing I do is the title. The title for me is really important because the title for me is that doorway. And the words of the title are important because every word has a frequency, has a vibration, has an energy. 
And I want to make sure that my title really um, is able to tell the reader clearly, define to the reader what the book is about and be very specific about it. So they don't have to think, well, what does that mean? But it's very specific. And that was talking to heaven, which is exactly what the book was about. Me as a medium talking to heaven. That was a title. The subtitle, um, Medium's Message of Life After Death. That's a great subtitle because it plays with message, which mediums do. A medium's message of life after death which is what the book is about. So that was very succinct and it was a good title. And that gave me something to jumpstart. That started me on getting involved with that title, started my head to go and to think about what does that mean? How can I bring that concept into a book, right? And then the other part, which I thought was very, very important, which I still do to this day when I do a book, is the cover. The cover has to be very, very important to you. You have to be as passionate about the cover as you can about the work because that also tells your reader who's walking by a store or uh, to pick it up or walk in the library and see the book cover. That, that should get the reader's attention. That should grab them right away. There should be colors that are used that are, are complementary to this, the book, to the story of the book, but also something that will grab that reader as they're looking at all the sh books in the shelves. Let's say there are 30 books, yours has to stand out. It's gotta be something that would stand out. Could do it from the title also. You can mix the title with the cover and come with the design that it sticks out that way. Now, nowadays, current day, titles are very different than they were in the past. Some people have one word titles, um, some people have two word titles, and some are shocking. Some are like, wow, and we're living in a time where things are shocking. So that might appeal to the reader. And you've got to know your demographic as well, because if you're going to appeal to a 15 to 25 year old market, the way you would do the cover would be different, and also the title would be different. And of course, your style of writing would be speaking to that age group. So of course, you gotta know your demographic that you are speaking to, who you wanna share your ideas with. Um, what else can I say? Things that get in the way sometimes about blocks, I'm talking about blocks, writing blocks. Again, I go extensively through this in the, in the course, but blocks, a procrastination, big one, I suffer from procrastination, but I do give myself a schedule, a loose schedule to write. I know I'm gonna cover so many words a day. Now, I personally love to write early in the morning, very, very early, first thing I do when I wake up is jump on the computer and start writing. And the reason I do that is because I'm not fully in the conscious state. I'm not fully awake yet. And I'm not a morning person, so it helps. So I'm in that kind of a twilight, alternate state of consciousness. I mean, I'm here, I'm present, but I'm also not fully back, right? So for me, that's great. And then I find for me also late in the, uh, well, late after lunch, like two o'clock, one o'clock, then they get my second wind to write. In the morning, I write, might write two hours and the afternoon, maybe two hours. And then again, maybe around supper time, around five o'clock, if I feel it, okay? But there's a certain goal of words I usually have, or a, like I said, a chapter today, or half a chapter, that's how I do that. Um, then the uh, block, writer's block, um, I'm not good enough. I don't, that's a trap, that's, not, that's a real trap, because you are good enough. You would not be here watching this right now if you weren't meant to write a book, just saying. Uh, there's definitely going to be other books out there like yours, but not, with your own signature on it, your perspective. Do you know how many books there are about life after death? But none of them are like mine, because it's my perspective, it's my story. And you gotta make it your story. And <clears throat> something else I talk about is when you write, a good way to write is let the page talk to you. Don't try to talk to the page. Let the page tell you the story it needs to say. It's an interesting way of getting into it. And as we get involved in the course, I'll go through this with you, is how you let the page speak to you and the actual format of the book and the structure of the book. I talk about how important it is, your structures are important, and of course, I should make up the structure right there. And we're doing, and we say, that's a book. I said, of course, and it could easily be a book. But I tell you the actual easy structure, I do a three chapter, three section structure. And I find for me that works really well, um, especially the type of book that I write. Now, depending on the type of book you write and what is it is about, of course, it really will help the structure the type of structure you're going to use. But remember, there's always the beginning, the middle, and the end. That's basic, that, that does not change. And you're going to impart knowledge and wisdom to change people. So people that are reading your book, another important thing um, that gets in the way, people don't know what's going to, how to end it. It'll end itself, the story will end itself, believe me. An um, important point I want to make is also this. When you write a page of a book, when you're telling the story, um, you want your reader to turn the page. You want it to be so exciting that they turn the page. So you build, kind of build the end of that page and you tell the story, but there's something there that they have to find out more about 
like this art of discovery. They want to find out something else. So put that out there. There's a big question that needs to be answered. Let that question keep on coming alive. Say it in different ways. Ask it in different ways. And then they'll turn the page. You want them to keep on turning the page more and more and get so more interesting, more and more interesting the further they go. So think of almost like um, going through a wormhole, getting more and more interesting the more they go through this or um, through a cave and the turning and something happens in the cave. Maybe there's a, a pool of water or maybe there's an opening you can see the, uh, the uh, sky or maybe there's a strange light in the distance of the cave. What is that journey? So you're taking your reader on a journey. And it has to be an exciting journey. It has to be one that keep on turning pages. On, wow, what's going to happen? Even if it's a book on healing, you can make that book on healing very, very exciting. Not just a book about healing, but perhaps take a case of healing. Someone that you know that was uh, with certain techniques were healed a certain way. Uh, that could be a whole journey of that healing technique done in a way where it's a story, where it's told in a story that people get easily. You don't want to talk above people or below people. You want to talk with people. You want to talk like they're having a conversation with people right in front of you, sitting in a chair in front of you. That is a style you really want to have. You do not want to talk above people or below people, but be informative, just have a natural conversation. But remember that with every page, we bring further and further into uh, the cave or the, the rabbit hole, or, yeah, or the wormhole, whatever you want to call it. But you're going into that space. And at the end of it, toward the end of the book, you know, there's going to be a light. You're going to find a way out. And the ending is going to be really surprising.